I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about, I think I scared her off. Oh no. It happens. It does. It happens a lot, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, when you don't know somebody and you really know very little about them, you, you pay close attention to their behaviors. And I think women in particular look for behaviors that are scary, right? Because men tend to be a lot bigger than them mm -hmm. and can be a lot more dangerous. And so women have to look for men and how emotionally stable they are. And I think men forget this all of the time yes. is that they were just trying to be friendly, that they didn't think that they were being overbearing mm -hmm. or even doing something that might freak them out or might signal to them that they are an unsafe person. Mm -hmm. But it's true, you know, as women, we do have to protect ourselves. We have to protect each other. There's statistics out there for a reason, and we have to be on the lookout. That's right. And even doing things like double texting shows someone that you don't have the emotional self-control to be patient, that you can't sit with things, you're insecure, and, show, and so ultimately, on some unconscious level, they know that you're more likely to be dangerous mm. because you lose control of your emotions. If you don't get what you want, you get angry right and so you have to really be able to sit with a lot of uncertainty especially in the early stages of dating where you don't know people mm -hmm. and so it's important that you start to understand how even with dating there's a biological component of safety and showing confident behavior and the more confident you act the more you're going to attract people and the less likely you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. But when you want something, particularly when the guy wants something more faster than the woman, they tend to get scared off and run away. Right. Right. And so today we got an email coaching where we see somebody that clearly has a high interest and I think it just freaked her out. Mm -hmm. Right. Now there are a couple of big, components to this situation this guy is in his late 20s and this girl is only 19 years old so there's a major age gap mm -hmm. but not only is it about the gap it's the uh ages in which they are at development yeah, exactly the fact that she's 19 is a huge difference she's still a teenager okay she's not even able to drink yet at least in the Uni right. United States, right? Some people are like, what? what? Of course we can. Yeah, I'm drinking right can. now. <laughs> that is true. But, you know, mm -hmm. 19, you're barely out of high school. You're almost certainly living with your parents. You don't really know anything about anything yet. You know what I mean? Like, right. And it's not so much about the ages or the age gap itself, mm -hmm. but more about where they're at developmentally. A 19-year-old. Right, right. Yeah. So this would be a different situation if it was, let's say, a 40-year-old and a 50-year-old or yeah, so exactly. on and so forth. And he's a smidge from 30. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just put it... There's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Because think about it this way. At 30, you've basically had the last 10 years to be... An adult right because you start really becoming an adult around 19 20 years old right mm -hmm. when you maybe have moved out gotten a job you're in college whatever but she is only a year out of high school and there's a big difference there right and if we're also talking about frontal lobe development that happens at around age 25 so there's still that's parts true. of her that are developing into a full-formed adult that's so very true that's not to diminish you know her needs or what she wants or things that she says or ideas she has but it's just to put into context that 
she's at a different stage than you are and that in itself can cause a lot of issues. She needs to find herself, become her own person, be able to make her own decisions. That's, That's right. That's what we need to see. Exactly. And so, you know, when somebody's that young, they're not often looking for a really serious relationship. They're looking to just hang out, have fun, date somebody. If they fall in love, okay, so be it. But they're not actively usually looking for those things. Whereas when you're around 30, you're looking for somebody to marry maybe or have a future with or have a long-term relationship with. And so there tends to be a lot of different needs there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just get into this one. He says, we met when we worked together two years ago as she was a hostess and I was a server at the same restaurant. We hooked up a year after we met on several occasions. And she was very hot and cold with me for the year after we hooked up. I wanted more and I think that scared her off. Mm. And I would say, I think that is exactly what happened too. I think she enjoyed hanging out with you. She was probably attracted to you. And had you been a lot more relaxed and not pushing for something that felt serious, she probably would have spent a lot more time with you. Right, and we're already seeing in that first year that hot and cold. Now that is some of her behavior showing some of how she sees the situation. Yeah. I think the hot was she was enjoying his company, flirting with him at work, mm -hmm. and, you know, thought he was cute. But the cold was, uh, he's calling me too much. He wants to see me too often. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready for anything like that. Right. And it's okay to want something serious, but we also have to make sure that the person that we are pursuing, you know, that their values align with ours, that they are prepared for that similar thing. Okay. So he said, starting in September of last year, I completed your workbooks and I'm on uh, the Creative Healing Course Section 5. So that's good. Mm -hmm. He's working on himself. He's getting to a good place. I don't know how much dating experience he has, you know, because I think many people would be closer to 30 and developmentally they wouldn't be attracted to a 19-year-old because they think, oh, maybe she's too immature. Or um, he sees that he has different things, but maybe he doesn't have a lot of dating experience. True. And then there's the other possibility that there are some 19 year olds that are very mature for their age, mm -hmm. you know, parentified children who then grow up and, you know, can manage things incredibly well for their age. Oh, yes. And, you know, somebody can look really good, but still those years really change you, mm -hmm. even if they are a mature 19 year old. Right. Those years do, do right. make a big difference. Okay. He says, I had a Skype call with you in November of 2022 about this girl and you told me I should download Instagram and she'd add me and that she would contact me. So do you think he did what I said? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out. Well, I sent her a friend request on Snapchat after our call to which she didn't respond. So... That's not what I advised him to do, and it didn't work, mm. okay? Because I could see, apparently, in the call that if she saw him on Instagram, she'd be ready at some point, and I felt I whatever was going on in that situation, I felt like that. But he didn't do it because he was anxious, hence the cold behavior on her part. And I see what you were doing, that you were just trying to make him a little bit more accessible if he didn't have any type of social mm -hmm. media to, in the very least, you know, she had a method of contacting him. Yeah. I see. But I was not advocating to reach out <laughs> and on Snapchat or, uh, or friend request her. Yeah. So he didn't do what I said. Mm. No surprise it didn't work out like that. In April of this year, she accepted it. April. Okay. So she accepted it in April he did it in November. So how many months is that? November, December, January, oh February, March, April. Six months later, wow. she accepted it. Now, now, what do you want to bet that if he had added, created an Instagram account, she would have added him a lot sooner? <laughs> I don't know. I bet she would have. It's hard to tell. I'm telling you, I've been doing this a long time. I bet she would have accepted <laughs> after two or three months tops. Interesting. I just know these things. You see things like this. You right? think she would have added him yeah. on Instagram? Yeah, I think if he had just created one, he would have been recommended to her within a couple of months and she would have just done it at some point. The old algorithm route. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, it would have got her. I see. Okay. But he was impatient. And I think it cost him. 
In April of this year, she accepted it and sent me a snap at one in the morning with a picture of herself at a bowling alley saying hi. Interesting. <laughs> what, what does that feel like for you as a woman when you hear something like that? I always ask the question, why now? You know, what, what was happening at one in the morning at a bowling alley, first off? Yeah. That she had the will to say, okay, well, let me look at my Snapchat friend request. It is a possibility, I will say, that sometimes with phone notifications, you know, if she has those Snapchat ones off, it's a possibility she didn't see it for some time. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that coincidental possibility, but it could have also been a... No, okay. She had a couple drinks at her at the bowling alley. That's possible, or other failed dating experiences to where she some was guy rejected her, and all of a sudden she was like, Possibly. "I'll reach out to this guy." Or just being in a state where she feels a little bit more open to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. She was in the same town we both worked in that night. Okay, home from college, so that's why she gave him back to their town. Mm. She had been away at college. I told her I was out of the country and would hit her up when I got home. A month later, in early May, I came home and went back to the restaurant to talk to management, and I saw her there training to be a server. We talked for a bit, and she texted me af after asking when I started back. I went back to work a few days later, and she was very flirty with me, and I could feel she was very attracted to me. So all of those emotions probably came rushing back mm -hmm. to him, right? We talked and flirted for a few shifts, and one shift I asked her if she wanted to hang out after work. She said, maybe. I took that as a no and continued working like normal. As the shift neared an end, she, came, she comes up to me and says, I thought we were going to hang out. I said, yeah, we still can. Maybe let me think about it. <laughs> okay. I said, okay, and walked away. What do you think? She wanted some attention there? Ah, I don't know. It sounded like she was ambivalent. Then it's possible that she you know, was thinking, well, what the heck? You know, the shift has ended anyways. Let's go. Mm -hmm. But what a strange way of approaching it. Maybe, then, oh, I thought we were going to, then maybe again. So, <laughs> well, it's frustrating. <laughs> not getting a clear answer here. Yeah, it's yeah. frustrating, and it's kind of like leading them on a little bit. Right. You know, right. it's like, why are you, if, why are you saying that, and then say, acting like you do want to go, and then you just say maybe, or no. Right. And it's like, what? Right. Uh, so, it's, but again, 19. True. A few minutes go by and she's leaving and I said, so are you ready? And she told me she didn't want to hang out because she was wearing work clothes. Okay. I mean, she already knew she was wearing work clothes when she was like, are we going to hang out? Right. That pissed me off and I felt like I was getting toyed with. Well, I could see why you'd be mm. frustrated. It does feel like she's playing games here a bit. She's certainly doing mixed messages here yeah yeah but again this is kind of the stuff that you see with a 19 year old mm -hmm. the more people get older the more they grow up and they don't play games like this and they can be a little bit more decisive this is where it goes back to being able to make decisions mm -hmm. being able to say how you feel even if it does disrupt the space a little bit some of that comes with age you know you get tired of this being the nice guy or this maybe you know you're able to say actually no i I don't have the energy for that today. As you grow older, it's a skill that, that comes to you, so. I mean, this could have been something like she had just moved back home or was staying back with the parents and she's thinking, oh great, uh, if I go out with him tonight, my parents are gonna ask and I just came back a week ago, so I don't wanna do it yet. You know, it's something like that. Too. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these things, but again, that's cause she's so much younger. A week goes by of working together and flirting and talking during shift. She hits me up one day asking if I can drive her and her friend somewhere. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't, I don't like, like that, that either. She asked me one shift what I'm doing that night, and I tell her I'm taking a walk. Then we work one shift together, and I shut down on her at work. So it sounds like she's again trying to get his attention here, maybe using him for a ride. Mm. You felt that too? Yep. And, uh,. You know, he's getting frustrated, and I don't blame him. I felt sad and hopeless 
that I'll not get another shot with her and that I'm being played. So I ignored her and shut down around her. Well, <sighs> as frustrating as it can be, if he does that, it just makes him look like he can't handle his emotions. He's getting really upset about things, you know, but... And it, it also seems like his level of investment in this to be getting as upset as he is... Yes. ...is much higher than what she's giving. Exactly. You know, so that honestly is going to be on him. And you know, if, if you're seeing her saying maybe from the get-go, why would you be pissed off if at the end of the day she said no? It was a maybe to begin with. Now, had she said yes, I'm totally down and mm -hmm. flaked on you last minute, would be a little bit different, but... Right now, we're seeing her behaviors are consistent <laughs> throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she's not reaching out to, or she maybe was a little bit reaching out, out outside yeah. of work. But one time, it was it seemed like just to use him for a ride. Mm -hmm. um, I could see why he's frustrated, but I think his interest level comes off so high to her that she can sense it. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like expectations. And I know he just wants a clear answer. Are we going yes or no? No, but she's not giving you that consistency. So it's not fair to you. It's not fair to her to expect that consistency out of her. You know, we, we can be frustrated with people and how they are, but if we are seeing that consistently at a certain point, it becomes our responsibility if we continue to engage in it yep. and invest. So it's kind of what I'm seeing here towards the end. Let's go on. She asked me what my problem was twice, and I told her, I don't know. We talked a bit more the following week at work. So I texted her and asked if she wanted to hook up one night, to which she said no, she was two hours away. So I think his mistake there was that he was too anxious, too impatient, and instead of saying, when are you free to get together, in which it could have been, anytime that week mm -hmm. or next week or whatever. He said, are you free tonight? In which case it's a lot easier for her to say, no, I'm two hours away. Right. And, and now it's like, oh. At this point, we don't know what he means exactly by hook up. Does he mean like hooking up physically or does he mean just hanging out? Because those would be two different things. You know, if somebody at work had just messaged me at night, having all these types of expectations before to spend time together, now he's asking me directly to hook up. As a young woman, <laughs> You know, working especially in that food industry, I would have this expectation of, okay, you know, this is clearly what he wants. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's not really something that I'm going to invest a lot into. Yeah. Like maybe he, you know, he's not really interested in getting to know me or he doesn't really care about me. He's just wanting to hook up. Mm -hmm. About two weeks ago, we worked a shift where she was getting real close, rubbing her body on me if we were in the same area rubbed her breasts on me, and was pretty touchy. I texted her that night asking if she, what she was wearing, being playful, and she was not having it. Right now I'm just thinking about those workplace harassment videos that you see <laughs> that are like, what not to do? <laughs> okay. But she was harassing him. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. But he's like, more, more harassment. <laughs> <laughs> harass me all night long <laughs> and she's like nope only at work <laughs> oh man yeah she is still very flirtatious at work and i'm just confused the problem is i don't trust her and feel she is just using me for attention or something what is the most attractive behavior i can exhibit in this situation well why don't you start because what would you do if you were in a situation like this? Number one, I would say do not take everything she does so personally. You know, I can see you taking every time she is a little bit flaky or you know, not really following through or not giving you that attention back that you're giving her that it upsets you mm -hmm. and that you're taking it as a rejection. You know, at this point, it doesn't seem like there is, at least there is not described a depth to the relationship. So I would temper your expectations with this number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think what you have to do is you gotta be a lot more casual, reframe how you see her and not some like serious girl that you're getting serious with, you know? See her as somebody that you might hang out with outside of work 
if she starts to kind of act more mature about things mm -hmm. and just trying to have fun, try not to put so much pressure on it. It seems like he's putting a lot of pressure on somebody that he doesn't really know that well mm -hmm. and somebody that is really young, you know, 19 years old. Again, that's a big difference between 19 and 25, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I get it that there are a lot of mixed messages and that's something that you want to factor in too. Yeah. Reliability is one of those you know, top things that you need in a relationship for it to work out. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing a lot of reliability from her. And instead of taking it personally, accept just where she is at at the moment. And we can't expect her to, you know, be this super organized, very clear and direct, assertive type of character when she's shown you over and over again that she's not. It might be worth looking at other options that might fit the bill a little bit better. This is something that I'm going to say just because I do hear it a lot out there and I think it's worth addressed in this situation. A lot of times so what I hear from other women about men in this situation, older men who are dating younger women, is always the question, why can't you find somebody your age? And that is a loaded statement, so I'm not going to get into all of that. <laughs> but, you know, I think the, the bigger question here is what are you looking for and who are you pursuing? It sounds like there might be a part of you that is wanting a more mature and deeper relationship. So explore some of that. It, there's nothing wrong with, you know, having fun, getting connected with people around you. She's legally an adult, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's that. She's legally an adult. You have every right to get to know her, but take things at a slower pace here. I agree. And she's going to pick up how high your interest level is. You're not doing a good job of hiding it, especially when you're sulking and, and pouting because she's being flaky and immature with you, which she mm -hmm. was. And, you know, you have to recognize that and just say, okay, you know, for now, she's just somebody I flirt with at work. I like flirting with her and, you know, maybe there'll be a chance to hook up and hang out, but you really don't want to give off a vibe that you're just trying to, like hook up with this girl maybe maybe she felt like you were just trying to use her mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. um it's hard to say she was giving him mixed signals but she's not following through with anything right so right. i say just relax have fun around her just enjoy flirting with her and i think if you start to come across like you're not pressuring her for more she's going to be a lot more likely to hang out with you mm -hmm. i agree Low but again, pressure. she's probably going to go wait a back away after college starts again, a couple of months. And so don't think you're going to get into this long-term relationship while she goes away to school. I don't see that happening, especially with as immature as she's been. Mm -hmm. So just try and see it for what it is. And sometimes we could just be attracted to somebody and enjoy flirting with them and, you know, occasionally hooking up. But just that's all it is, you know? Mm-hmm. Take it one step at a time, take it easy, just get to know her. And um, yeah, I would say I agree with the low pressure route. Yep. All right, so hopefully this one's been helpful to you. Of course, if you wanna get our help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you're ready. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. Mm -hmm.